Hey everyone, it's Berm, and this is Level Zero Networking. In part one of the series, we did the initial installation of iOS. In this video, we'll start making the router functional. The first thing we need to do is determine what interface we need to configure. On our router, let's make sure we're logged in as the admin account we created in the last video. Now, we're going to want to plug an Ethernet cable into your router and another device. This other device doesn't need to be your internet connection, but it needs to be a device that is turned on. For instance, you could plug into your gaming console, a laptop, desktop, etc. Really, anything with an RJ45 connection available. Now, let's see what port you're plugged into. Let's run the show interfaces command. This command needs to be run from what is called operational mode. If you just logged in, then you're in operational mode. But the easiest way to know is to simply look for a tilde followed by a dollar sign. Also, if you're in edit mode, then it will say edit in square brackets. You're going to be looking for the field S slash L. I'm going to be using Ethernet 1 for this video. You should notate which interface is up, up, that is U slash U. The first value tells you that the interface is turned on in the software. The second value tells you that the interface is plugged in and that it has an active connection to that device. If your device has a lot of ports, you may want to label them. Your public IP address will typically come from your provider via DHCP, but some will assign you a static IP and gateway. You'll need to know this before continuing. We'll be showing you both methods to configure your device. All right, back to the configuration. First, we need to go into edit mode. To do this, we type configure. The first thing we're going to do is set the interface description. You're going to want to use something that lets you know what the interface is for. For me, I'm just going to name it internet. This will let me know that this is the interface pointed toward my ISP. If your provider gave you a static IP address, then this will need to be configured manually. We'll go ahead and set the ethernet address now. We're doing set interfaces, ethernet, eth1, address, and then this is going to be your public IP. My VIOS box is not plugged into my ISP, so this is going to be a private IP for me. With DHCP, we automatically get a default route. However, with a manual IP, we'll have to do it ourselves. We'll configure this under protocols. The 0.0.0.0, .0 is called the quad zero or a default route. This is where all traffic will be sent if there isn't a better route available. Your next hop will be the IP address of the provider, which should have been provided as well. The method we're going to be using in this video is going to be DHCP. I did want to show you how to configure a static route just in case, but now I'm going to go ahead and remove the static route and the IP address now. Now, doing a DHCP address is very simple. The first thing we're going to do is set interfaces Ethernet ETH1 address, and instead of putting a number there, we're just going to put DHCP. This will tell the router to request an IP from the provider using DHCP. Now, we'll commit the config and check that we have an IP. You may have noticed that I typed run in front of the show interfaces command. This allows me to run operational commands while in the configuration mode. Remember a minute ago I mentioned that you'll automatically receive a default route when using DHCP. Let's verify that happened. To do that, we'll simply type show IP route, or in our case, run show IP route. And here it is. You can see we have a static route for 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. The via is gonna be your next hop, more than likely gonna be the ISP's address. As usual, we'll go ahead and commit these changes. Now, we should be able to ping the internet. Even though we have access to the internet using an IP address, we shouldn't be able to reach it using a host name yet. As you can see, we're not able to resolve any host names yet. The reason is that we haven't configured DNS yet. Let's go ahead and do that now. To do that, we're just gonna set a name server. Now let's commit and try our ping again. And success. Now, before we consider connecting users to this router, we're gonna to wanna to configure the firewall. VIOS version 1.4 and forward use NF tables for this. So this is also what we'll be using for this video. NF table uses three chains to filter traffic, the input chain, the output chain, and the forward chain. Here's a quick description of each chain. The input chain is traffic that is destined for the router itself, like trying to ping an IP on the router. The output chain is traffic that is originated from the router, like trying to ping something from the router. The forward chain is traffic that goes through the router, like traffic from a host connected to the router trying to reach the internet. We're going to start with the input chain since that's the traffic trying to reach our router. These rules will be pretty simple. We're going to deny all traffic from the internet unless it's return traffic. We'll configure the default action for the chain, which will be to drop all traffic. The reason we're going to drop the traffic instead of rejecting it is so that the traffic is denied silently. An action of reject will let the remote end know that we've rejected it. 
Next, we'll allow any traffic initiated by us back into the router. Let me go over these states real quick. A state of established means that we've initiated the traffic and the return traffic is part of that connection. A related state means the traffic is related to the original connection, but it isn't the connection, like an ICMP error. Now, let's apply the filters to an interface. If we don't put an interface, then the traffic can come in on any interface. I'll be setting a description as well. I recommend you use useful descriptions where possible. Now we'll go ahead and commit the config. I'm gonna use commit confirm and recommend that you get in the habit of doing so as well. We do wanna proceed. As you can see, it'll do an automatic reboot in five. Since we haven't saved the changes, it'll reboot to the configuration before we did the commit. Now let's go ahead and save and confirm. We're gonna go ahead and ping the internet one more time after implementing these firewall rules. We do still have internet, so let's check the input chain using show firewall IPv4 input filter. As you can see, we have five packets there. Now we're gonna to move to the output chain. The output chain is gonna be much simpler since we trust our router. We're gonna use the default action of accept. We'll go ahead and commit that as well. Now we'll save and confirm. Now the last chain we're gonna do is the forward chain. The forward chain is gonna be similar to the input chain. We're gonna deny everything by default, but then allow return traffic from the trusted side. This first rule is gonna be rule 20 because we'll be adding a rule before it in just a minute. Again, you're gonna notice that this looks very similar to the input chain. And just like with the input chain, let's go ahead and scope the interface that the rule applies to. I'd just like to mention that NF tables use a feature called FastPath. This allows for devices to skip the initial flow process if a session already exists. This allows for faster processing when using the firewall. Let's go ahead and configure a flow table now. The name of the flow table is arbitrary. It can be anything you want. I'm going to use FT1 for flow table 1. This config will add a description so we know what the flow table is for. Then we'll apply it to our external interface. Offload software means the processing of the flow table will be handled by the CPU rather than specialized hardware. Before we commit, let's take a look at the config for our forward chain. As you can see, we have our forward filter rule 20, and we also have our flow table FT1. However, I did mention we were gonna have a rule before 20, and that hasn't been put in. Doing a compare commands is a good way to make sure that you've input everything that you want before you commit. I'm gonna go ahead and put in rule 10 now. You may have noticed that we didn't put an inbound interface for this rule. That's because we will be using it for a number of interfaces later. Traffic isn't allowed through this rule until it has already been filtered. So we can leave any specific interface off of it. This allows all interfaces to benefit from the offloading. Let's go ahead and check our commands one more time. And now as we can see, we have rule 10, rule 20, and we have our flow table. Since everything looks good, we'll go ahead and commit confirm. And now we'll go ahead and save and confirm. We don't have any forward traffic yet, but we'll be adding more firewall config once we have the LAN portion of our config set up. Well, that's all for part two of this five part series. If you enjoyed the video or have any feedback, let us know in the comments and make sure to drop a like on this video. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more content and the rest of this series.